For regular videos on ancient cultures and forgotten civilizations, please subscribe. And for additional information, see the notes below the video. Welcome to the Antiquities Travel Guide. Follow us to different countries as we search for ancient artifacts. If you too wish to explore the ancient past through travel, we'll help you plan where to go, what to see, and how best to enjoy what you encounter. In this series of the ATG, you can accompany Cassie and me on our trek through the Yucatan Peninsula, homeland of the ancient Maya. Come on, let's go. Lying in the heart of the jungles of the northern Paten region of southern Mexico, otherwise known as the Maya Lowlands, is one of the most important of all Maya archaeological sites, Calakmul. Calakmul, together with its rivals Palenque in the state of Chiapas and Tikal in Guatemala, was a Maya superpower. To get to it, you have to turn off Route 186, heading southward, and drive about 37 miles. That's the entrance road. Okay, the fee you pay at the main gate is 50 pesos per person, not per car, so we paid 100. There are no towns on this road, so gas up. So there was a main gate at the main road, and we paid at the gate, uh, and then it's a 60, over 60 kilometer drive to Kalak Mool, right? So we went about, what, about a half hour? And uh, we came to another gate, and they wanted us to pay an additional fee to go further. Like 150, right? Yeah. Pesos. And then um, they told us that there was going to be another stop <laughs> somewhere along the way here where we have to pay yet again to go further. So just letting you know that one fee at the front gate isn't the only one you're going to have to pay. As I understand it, the first fee is for shared land access. And the second fee is to get into the preserve. The final fee is for the archaeological park itself, 75 pesos, which is about $3.85 US. So that's a total of 285 pesos or about 1025 American. The road is paved most of the way, but its condition deteriorates near the end and it becomes riddled with potholes. So be careful. Kalak Mool is the largest Maya archaeological site in Mesoamerica, occupying an area of 43 square miles with over 6,700 structures. With travel time, this will constitute an entire day's trip. So get here early and make sure you familiarize yourself with the map because it's easy to overlook some parts of the site. We're now entering Kalak Mool, the, what may be the largest city that the Maya ever built. Most of the city is still covered by the jungle. When you visit, it's pretty much just the core that you're going to see. It's an area about three quarters of a mile square. We're right in the midst of a thick tropical forest called the Kalakmul Biosphere Reserve. There's only one forest larger than this one in the world, and that's the Amazon. The mahogany and saba trees here tower over you. From what I hear, there are mountain cats and jaguars in here. We didn't encounter any of them, but we did see all kinds of birds and monkeys too. I'll show you them in a minute. What does the name Kalakmul mean? In Maya, Ka means two. Lak means adjacent, and Mul signifies any artificial mound or pyramid. So Kalakmul means city of the two adjacent pyramids. It's not the ancient name. In ancient times, the city core, at least, was known as Osh Tetun, meaning three stones. The greater region was called Chiknab, meaning place of the water lily. Kalakmul urbanized toward the end of the Middle Pre-Classic period, between 550 and 300 BCE, but it reached its true splendor in the Classic period. By the Early Classic, between 250 and 600 CE, it had already begun to establish alliances that included the settlements of El Mirador, Nakbe, and Washaktun in the Maya Lowlands. Kalakmul was the largest and most powerful settlement in the coalition. As you head westward along the northern end of the site, just off the path to the right, you'll run into the Chiknab complex, the construction of which began in the 5th century CE. It contains 68 structures. This complex is famous for the murals that were discovered on the exterior of a buried platform underneath structure one. 
Structure 1, like most Maya buildings, was not the result of a single construction episode, but rather a series of structures superimposed one over another. This building consisted of six substructures, reflecting a building period of hundreds of years. It was the facade of substructure 1-4, which dates to between 620 and 700 CE, that was painted. Its murals are unique in the Maya world because they depict not royalty or warfare, but nobles and commoners engaged in social rituals. Among other things, the paintings reveal much about the clothing, hairstyles, and personal adornments of the ancient Maya at Kalak Mool. If you're interested in learning more about the murals, I'll link informative articles about them in the description below the video. Kalak Mool is one of the most structure-rich sites of the Maya. The site contains 117 stelae in paired sets representing rulers and their wives. Most of the stelae record dates from 435 to 909 CE. They tend to be made of low quality limestone and sadly are badly eroded. As we entered the central plaza, we heard strange noises. Yeah, I can hear him. Are we gonna Are we gonna get murdered by a monkey today? I don't know. Do they do they attack? I don't even know. Guess we're about to find out. We could make history oh. ourselves. Oh, Holy crap, I see him. Oh my god. Oh, wow. At first I thought that someone had drank too much last night. Then I thought maybe it was dinosaurs. Turns out they were howler monkeys. Got to see some howler monkeys. Yeah, you were wondering if we get to see any. Structure 5 here in the Central Plaza had a religious and political importance, as we believe Maya kings were enthroned here. Kalak Mool was the city ruled by the Khan Dynasty, also known as the Snake Polity or Serpent's Kingdom. But before the 6th century, the snakes weren't residing here yet. The earliest ruler of the Khan or Snake Dynasty who may have taken up residence here at Kalak Mool was Scroll Serpent, whom I referred to in an earlier episode as an overlord of the ruler of Edzna. We have record of Scroll Serpent attacking Palenque more than 100 miles from here. Palenque wasn't a big city, maybe 10,000 people, but it was an important gateway for trade to the west, just as Edzna was. Scroll Serpent invaded, mostly using proxies and allies rather than his own troops. Palenque's first known queen, the Lady Yol Iknal, tried her best to defend her city against the invasion, but surrendered on April 21st, 599. Scroll Serpent's forces sacked the city. But whether Scroll Serpent actually resided here is still open to question. It's possible that the Snake Dynasty made its base at Kalak Mool a bit later than that. The earliest extant stelas here up to the early 7th century do not contain the emblem glyph of the Khan Dynasty. The first time that we see the Khan emblem glyph clearly associated with Kalak Mool is in the year 631. And this is seen in an inscription on a hieroglyphic stairway, not at Kalak Mool, but at the city of Naranjo now in Guatemala. During the time of Scroll Serpent, Naranjo appears to have been subject to the snake polity, but they rebelled sometime in the 620s. The hieroglyphs tell us that the Khan ruler Yuknom Head presided over a successful military attack on Naranjo and that Yuknom Head was king at Oshtetun, the ancient name for Kalak Mool. Apparently the ruler of Naranjo was brought here and tortured, so we wonder. Was it Yuknom Head who made Kalak Mool the capital of the Khan Kingdom? The Golden Age of Kalak Mool coincided with the 50-year reign of Yuknom the Great. 
He took the name of the early classic king, Yuknom Chen, upon his accession, but we call him the Great because of how long he reigned, because he developed an ambitious program of palace constructions and renovations, because of his very clever political and economic negotiations with a number of the Paten cities, and because of his military accomplishments. Tikal and Kalakmul were mortal enemies at that time. In 650, Yuknom the Great attacked Dos Pilas, the ruler of which, Bailai Chan Kawil, was the brother of the ruler of Tikal. As a result, Bailai Chan Kawil was forced to acknowledge Yuknom as his overlord. In 657, Yuknom attacked Tikal itself, and its ruler, Nun Oyol Chak, also appears to have pledged some form of fealty to Yuknom. Yuknom also managed to establish hegemony over several cities that Tikal had controlled. Tikal was on the point of losing everything. But then, in 672, the Tikal king asserted his independence by forcibly ousting his brother from Dos Pilas. Kalakmul then intervened in 677 and dealt Tikal a second defeat, which was followed in 679 by a decisive vanquishment at the hands of Dos Pilas with Kalakmul's help. Kalakmul was supreme. Though there was never a Maya empire that controlled all of Mesoamerica or even all the Yucatan, Kalakmul was a superpower. Indeed, the greatest empire the Maya ever created. Yuknom instituted a series of renovations and installation of public works that changed the whole image of the city. His architectural activity was focused mostly on the palace complexes throughout the core of the site. Yuknom the Great was well into his 80s when he died. Many of the successes of his later years may actually have been the achievements of his successor, Yuknom Yichak Kak, better known as Fiery Claw, who probably was in charge even before he was officially enthroned. This is one of the tallest pyramids in the Maya world, called, rather clinically, Structure 2. It is known, colloquially, as the Grand Pyramid of Kalakmul, and it is truly a testimony to the city's wealth and power. It stands over 148 feet high. See that broad staircase? We're going up it. The construction of this pyramid is similar to other pyramids, where there are multiple constructions on top of each other. The original building, from the late pre-classic, was an already large triadic pyramid. An extension was added to the front of the pyramid in the early classic period, which covered a number of earlier buildings. The facade was then decorated with six large masks set between the stairways, three arranged on each side, vertically. Yeah, it's a tough climb. The view up here was spectacular, but this isn't the top of the pyramid. Oh no, there's more. We're at a ceremonial center called the Complex of the Tiger, and just behind where we were was another stairway going up further. Nine royal tombs were discovered in this pyramid's substructures. One of them is the tomb of Yuknom's successor, Yichak Kak, Fiery Claw. It was in his time that Tikal was able to turn the tables on Kalakmul. On August 5th, 695, in one of the most consequential clashes of Maya history, the forces of Fiery Claw attacked the army of Tikal's king, Yasaw Chan Kawil, a battle that ended in Kalakmul's defeat and an event commemorated at Tikal in a carved wooden lintel on top of a temple. As a result, Kalakmul was never to recover its prior preeminence. This is not to say it didn't have power, but its golden age did come to a close. Kalakmul turned its attention northward to the Rio Beck area after this. So we're at the top of the Grand Pyramid. It's 360 views all around, and it doesn't appear that there's anything taller in the vicinity. Yeah, we feel like we're sitting at the top of the world. Yichak Kak's corpse was wrapped in layers of lime, palm, fine cotton textiles. You can check out his grave goods at the Museum of Maya Archaeology in Campeche. Finds like these suggest that many Maya temple pyramids functioned as monuments dedicated to the worship of deceased kings. This is something you can't see when visiting, but tunnel excavations in Structure 2 revealed a large and spectacular stucco frieze. In it, a person of apparently high rank, flanked by 
huge, fantastic two-headed birds, makes his way to the entrance to the underworld. On the east and west side of the central plaza are structures four and six. Together, they formed a pairing and are believed to have had an astronomical function. Structure six was an observatory. At the top, there are these two stelae framing the central door, which were erected on January 26, 702, and depict a royal couple, Yuknom Tolkawil, and one of his wives. Structure four to the east consists of three sighting temples, which mark the positions of the rising sun at the summer solstice, north temple, the winter solstice, the south temple, and at the central temple, the equinox. These stelas in front of the central temple also depict Yuknom Tok Kawil and his wife. The stelae on site are, as you can see, not in the best condition. By far the best preserved image of Yuknom Tok Kawil, and in fact the finest surviving monument from this city, is Stela 51. It's not here anymore, but in the Campeche Museum. Still, it shows you the king in full glory. Structure 7, which rises to a height of 69 feet, is another impressive structure. It has a broad stairway that once led to a three-chambered temple at the top. We're in the central plaza on the north end. This is the third largest building in Kalakmul. You can see in front of it these large stelas. Uh, they're all eroded, so you can't really tell what was on them anymore. Uh, but up at the very top of this building, we call this Structure 7, there was found the tomb of a male person and we believe that this was one of the most important figures in Kalakmul's history. We're not sure who the king was. It could have been Yuknom Tolkawil or somebody else, but one of the great treasures of his tomb was this fabulous naturalistic jade mask, which also can be seen at the Campeche Museum. I'm standing here in front of Stila number eight, which is very important in helping us to reconstruct the history of Kalakmul. And you can see an image here of a king, you see his head up there and the rest of his body. That is Yukom Tok. And it says here uh, in Mayan dating that he erected this stela in the year 721 of the Common Era. There is one other important building associated with this king, Structure 1, which is located to the east of the central plaza. Because it was built on a small hill, Structure 1 appears to be higher than Structure 2, although this is not the case. Structure 2 is higher. A number of stelae were erected at the base of Structure 1 by Yuknom Tok Kawil in 731. The buildings are amazing, but the howler monkeys were just incredible. Like I was shaking a little bit. It was all <laughs> happening right above me in the trees. We got Sound to see them in their natural habitat. Yeah. It sounded like they were shouting at each other. Um, but I was thinking it's possible that they were yelling at us because they were all moving together following uh, another group of two across the trees. So my first impression was maybe they're chasing these two and there's going to be a fight. But it's possible that those two were just scouting ahead or something, since the whole big group behind uh, was moving together. Who knows? But either way, that was crazy. If you want to know more about the rulers of Kalakmul and of a number of other important Maya cities, you'll want to check out the book Chronicle of the Maya Kings and Queens. It's one of my faves by Simon Martin and Nikolai Grubi. I'll leave a link in the description below the video. But what we talked about today raises a question. Where did the Khan or Snake Dynasty originate? They came here already strong. They must have ruled somewhere else previously. Well, we'll find out next episode, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.